Now, this is a very different terminal to what I normally run. So, this is a terminal called Hyper, and I don't know why, but it's a terminal written in web technology. So, it's an Electron application, and it's written with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Now, before you say, this is really dumb, I am well aware that this is really dumb, but hear me out, okay? It's surprisingly usable. So, obviously, as just a regular terminal, it does all the regular terminal things. So, I can run my terminal commands, I can bring up my terminal applications, I can bring up different terminal applications. You know how a terminal works, that's not really why you're here. Now, the reason why you're here is because you have no idea why this exists just as much as I don't. So, we have things like a context menu, which, you know, is sort of fairly common in some of the more user-friendly terminals. So if you try out something like the GNOME terminal or any of the terminals that also intend to work on Windows, they will have a context menu, one exception being Alacrity, but that's because that's actually a good terminal. So as you can see in here, we have the ability to do things like new tabs and we have the ability to do splits as well. So this actually has a built-in multiplexer. So if I go and press Control shift e as you're going to see, it creates a new split down here, and Control shift d is going to create a new split to the right. So the way that you go and close one of these splits is by pressing Control shift w So pretty much everything in this application has Control shift as its modifier key. I've talked about why I don't like Control shift in the past, but you kind of have to deal with it here. Sadly, I don't think it's a very good multiplexer because I don't think there's a way to move between the splits with a key binding. So I tried to do Control shift up and down, but it doesn't really do anything. But you can actually move between the tabs with a key binding, so there might be something hidden somewhere. So to open a new tab, it's Control shift t and if we do Control shift left and right, that will actually move around. So there might be a binding somewhere, but the reason why I'm mentioning this is because the documentation is fairly lacking. The only reason I know there are key bindings is because I've messed around with them. So there is no documentation on the key mappings, so you kind of have to work it out for yourself. But luckily, most of them are fairly sensible. Like zooming in is on control plus and zooming out is on control minus and then resetting the scale is on control zero. So all of that stuff is fairly straightforward. But if there are other key bindings hidden around the application, there's no documentation on what they actually are. So the plugins are pretty much the only reason why you might want to use a terminal like this because this terminal window is basically just a web frame. So anything you can do in JavaScript to a web page can also be done to this terminal. Obviously, assuming you're using the correct version of JavaScript. So for example, there is this plugin right here called Hyperpower, which basically makes it so there's going to be particle effects as you're typing. Obviously, it's not a very productive plugin, but this sort of gives you an idea of the extent of the power you have with JavaScript because unlike other terminals where you have like a limited API for what you can do with this you have access to the entire web frame and you can do anything you want. So if you want to go and install a plugin it's pretty straightforward. So this terminal actually has a built-in I guess plugin manager or package manager. Basically it's just a wrapper for npm that filters out everything that isn't a hyper plugin but basically all we do is run a hyper I and then the name of the plugin. So in this case, it's Hyperpower. So if we just run that over here, Hyper I, Hyperpower, or we could run install, or there's some other aliases for it as well, which I'll show you in just a moment. So if we go and run that, as you're gonna see, it has successfully installed, but nothing's really happening. So we have to go and reload the application or we can relaunch it. I find it easier to just relaunch it. So that's what we're going to do. And as we're going to see, it's already started working. So if I go and type stuff, you know, there's particle effects. And if I go and run the wow command, as you're going to see, we have even more particle effects now. Obviously, as I said before, it's not a productive plugin, but it's still neat that it can be done. So there are also themes for this terminal as well, but because you install them the same way as a plugin, it's very hard to differentiate between them. So some of the themes are just color schemes, but then you have other ones like this one right here, where it's also going to do like a, a glitchy effect on your terminal as well. So, I wouldn't really say this terminal even has a distinction between themes and plugins just because of how open it is and how much you can actually edit it. But back to that plugin manager for just a bit. So if I go and run hyper u hyper power, that's going to uninstall this because this is really annoying to look at. And as we're going to see, it's still working for some reason, even though it's been uninstalled. We'll just relaunch the terminal.
And okay, there we go. Now we're back to a usable terminal. So if we run hyper-h, as we're going to see, there's a couple of other options in here. So you can go and look at the documentation for any of the plugins. You can go and list all the installed plugins. You can list out the plugins available on NPM. You can search for plugins. Pretty much the normal stuff you'd expect from a plugin manager. So out of the box, it's going to look a little bit different to this, and that's because I've gone and modified the config file. So we can get to that by going and pressing the preferences option here, or as you saw, by also pressing control comma. Now, the first thing I would recommend doing is going and modifying the font family because one, it's probably not going to be using whatever you want your main font to be, and two, you're not going to have any symbols. And I hadn't actually gone and fixed the symbols problem. So the reason why things like LS weren't actually showing anything, so I'll show you that just now in case you missed it earlier on. If I go and run LS, as you can see, it's missing all the symbols. That's because it's not actually loading in something like hack nerd font or some other font that actually has nerd symbols in it. So I can go and add that into the list here and then that's going to start working. So hack nerd font. And if we save that, it's going to go and reload the config for us, which is always nice to see. And as you can see, now we actually have symbols over here. So my recommendation is always to have a main font, which is whatever font you want to use, and then have some sort of nerd font, and then generally also have some sort of emoji font as well, just in case you happen to have them anywhere on your terminal. But you don't have to do that, it's just my general recommendation. And as for the rest of the stuff in here, it's all pretty self-explanatory, and where it's not, all of this documentation you see, all of this is included by default. So this should do a pretty good job at explaining what you actually have to set if you want to go and change the value. So for example, if you want to go and change any of the colors, you can use a hex value, RGB, HSL, HSV, or HWB, I have no idea what that is, or CMYK. And that's going to be true for all of the colors. I would suggest in a future update to include this list everywhere that you can go and modify a color just so it's clear that it can be used for everything but it's not a major problem so by default you actually have these two options here enabled at least on linux so if we go and re-enable the hamburger menu and re-enable the controls it's going to look a little bit different so now we have this menu up to the top left here this is just sort of like a, a fill-in for the context menu it has a few other options in it as well but nothing too out of the ordinary, I guess. There's things like the developer controls as well and zoom options, but nothing too crazy. And up to the right hand side here, we have these window controls, which on a tiling window manager are completely useless and just generally get in the way. One neat thing you can do though is because this is just a web frame, you can actually go and pass in a custom CSS file. So you don't have to go and just be limited to setting, you know, the colors and things like that. If you want to go and do complete custom CSS, you have these two options right here. Personally, I don't really see any reason to use them because I'm perfectly fine just setting colors like any other terminal will let you do. But if you want a bit more control, that option is there for you to use. And if you do just want to set the general colors, you can use these options right here. So there are some other things you can configure in here that are pretty normal to most terminals, like setting your shell, but none of those are really that interesting. The one that I want to talk about is setting the custom key maps. Now, in theory, every single key in this application can be rebound. However, as I mentioned earlier, there isn't a list of key mappings and there also isn't a list of the function names for the keys either. So you in theory can remap them if you can work out what they're actually called. So if you want to go and dig through the code base or something like that, you can rebind them. So besides the obvious problem of this being a web-based terminal, it does have some actual problems as well. So one of them being at various font sizes, for some reason the text gets really blurry. So right now I'm at font size 16, and I don't know how well it's showing up on YouTube, but, but this text in here is a little bit blurry. So if I zoom in a bit, at size uh, 20 it also becomes a problem as well. This text is sort of hard to read, so it's not just a problem with the text being small. At some sizes the font just gets really, really blurry. But if we go up a size to, I think, 22, 22 is perfectly fine. So I don't know what exactly is causing this. I'll include a screenshot down below so you can see it for yourself. But I've never seen a web browser do this, and I've never seen a terminal do this either. So I'm not really sure what the deal is here. So because the plugins are coming from the NPM repos, it needed some sort of NPM client, and the developers decided to use Yarn, and Yarn was actually made a dependency of this application. So even though I use NPM for everything else, this one application I need to have Yarn installed for. 
my suggestion would be to ask the user, do you have NPM installed or do you have Yarn installed? Use whichever one you want to use to go and download the plugins. And if the user doesn't have either installed, then just disable the ability to download plugins. I don't think there's a build reason why Yarn needs to be installed for this application. And seeing as though this is an Electron application, it loads really slowly. It's so slow, in fact, that if I was to go and open up Hyper and then directly open up another terminal, the other terminal will open up first. So let's try it out. Open up Hyper, open up Alacrity. As you can see, Alacrity opened up first and then Hyper opened up second. Now, I don't think that anyone should run this application, partially because giving random JavaScript code this much access to your system is just generally not a very good idea. But also, I'm not the audience for this application. I like my terminals to just be a terminal. So, for example, with Alacrity here, it does everything a terminal needs to do. It doesn't have, like, fancy plugins or anything like that that can make the screen shake and create particles, but it does everything a terminal needs to do. But... If you are one of those people who like terminals like RetroTerm, where you can do fancy effects to your terminal, make it look weird and things like that, maybe you might want to try this out because this gives you so much freedom if you want to put in the work to do all of that stuff that just really isn't possible with most other terminals, or at least just isn't feasible. Obviously, you could do all of this stuff to ST, but when you're working directly with a web frame, you have so much more control over doing these really high level things rather than trying to work out memory management and things like that. If you just want to do fancy particle effects and fancy random effects like that, doing it in a high level language like JavaScript when you have access directly to a web frame is going to be so much easier to do. So I think this application is a pretty interesting experiment, but it's definitely not the terminal for me. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, but before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim Corbinian, Andrew Craig, Nathan Montezar, Joseph Purity, Road, Tony Donald, John Merrick McKell, Nephite, Tease, and Zilva. If you want to go and support my work, there'll be some links down below to my Patreon and Subscribestar and Cointree and all of that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, which is Tech Over T, available on Library and YouTube for the video version and the audio version available basically anywhere you can listen to audio podcasts. And this channel is also available on Library, BitTube, and BitChute if you want to watch it on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.